This is one of the biggest book hauls that I've ever done and I'm very <laughs> intimidated by it. Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel and welcome to an autumn cozy book haul. I am so excited. I'm so excited for this. I feel like in the UK the weather has just changed. It's become all autumnal and I'm totally feeling it. <laughs> it's been a long time since I last did a book haul. I always wait till I've got like 20 to 30 books and I did my last book haul four months ago because I've been trying to buy less books. So I think we've got just over 30 books here to go through and discuss. Lots of new releases, lots of mysteries, horrors, that kind of thing. But before we get into the video I want to say the biggest thank you to the sponsor of today's video which is Serious Readers. Now this this is one of my favorite brands I've ever worked with because I love their products so so much and I need you guys to go check it out. It's amazing. Generally like listen don't go away stay with me it's amazing. Serious readers make lights perfect for reading. Lights made specifically for reading. Um, have I got you? I know I have. I just, it's so cool. If you've ever wanted a high quality reading light, you need to get it from Serious Readers. If you've ever thought, I need a light when I'm sitting in my chair at night or sitting in my bed at night to help me read better, you generally need to go get it from Serious Readers. They are the best because they're made with readers in mind. They have table lights, floor lights, compact lights, and so much more. So something that is so unique about Serious Lights and what sets them apart from everything else is that it uses special daylight wavelength technology which replicates the daylight spectrum as closely as possible. So normal LEDs have blue light which I'm sure you've heard much about. There's research that shows it can disrupt sleep and disturb other elements of your health but these have something called like purple, <laughs> purple light which replicates the daylight spectrum. So it just feels like when you're reading, like when I've been reading, it feels like you've got strong daylight showing on your page. It's very, very easy on the eyes. So I have the high definition floor light. I have the heavyweight version with the cordless version in black and brass. There's loads of different colors that you can choose from, but I absolutely love the black and brass one. I just think it looks, it looks gorgeous as well as being <laughs> something that is so good to use. It's adjustable for where you're reading. So you can, if you're reading at different angles, you can adjust the head and it's got a dimmer. I usually have it quite low on the dimmer because I do like when I'm reading in the evening for it to be like, chill vibes but it lights my page really really well when I'm reading. I've noticed I've been getting way less eye strain when I've been reading in the evenings. This is a problem I've spoken about over the years quite a few times but sometimes when I'm reading particularly in the evenings in the dark I've gotten really bad eye strain and I've noticed that happening a lot less when I've been reading with this light. I've got to say it also came packaged really well. I was really impressed with how it came packaged. It was numbered really easily. It was really simple. It came made as well my big light. I didn't even have to assemble it but the box is like out in a really accessible way. Also, Serious Readers is a British company and the Serious Lights range is made in the UK. So you know it's made here, which I think is really cool. And you guys, I've got the best deal for you. If you use the code MEG15 with any purchase in the Serious Lights range, so the high definition lights, the classic lights, the Alex light, you will get a free compact light, which I have as well. I think it's so good for using at your desk. I use it at my desk at the moment. Or if you want like a bedside lamp, it's really good. They retail for 150 pounds. So you're getting a free light if you use my code worth £150 with the purchase of any of those other lights. So I think that is such a good deal. I think that's one of the best <laughs> codes I've ever had. So I would 100% recommend you go and check them out. Use the link down in the description. Um, I have loved using this product so, so much. So please go give it a go. Okay, everyone. <laughs> Let's get into this. I've separated the books into different sections. So let's just begin. Let's start with some 2022 releases that I have got my hands on. There's a few 2022 releases in other <laughs> categories as well, but these are mostly the hardbacks that I've got in. So firstly, one that arrived a few days ago was The Bullet That Missed by Richard Osman. Look at these special edges from Water Series. Aren't they so cool? <gasps> so excited. <laughs> So a lot of you will know this is my favourite murder mystery series. I've read the first two and I gave them both five stars. We're following these elderly characters who live at this retirement village as they used to solve murders just in this little club they had, like unsolved murders, try and solve them. But then murder starts turning up on their doorstep and you find actually these lot, they're actually very good at solving murders. They've got some special skills <laughs> and it's just 
funny books, heartwarming, quick fun reads. I just love them so, so much. So I don't want to tell you too much about this one because obviously it is the third one. But on the back it says, Four Unlikely Friends, A Murder With No Body, and trouble knocking at their door. Elizabeth is one of the four characters and listen, that girl's got a lot of history. <laughs> She's got a lot going on in history and I think this one is another person from Elizabeth's past turning up. But yeah, I love this series so much. It's been announced, I think Richard Osman has signed on for two more books in this series and also two more books in a new series, which is a father and daughter-in-law who have a detective agency solving murders together. So listen, I'm ready for the Richard Osman literary world to just grow. <laughs> then we have, oh, listen, she's, the girlies are reading her. The girlies are reading her at the moment. It's Babel by R.F. Kwang. Let me hear you say it. <laughs> That's what we've been waiting for. It's what we wanted all along. Oh, I'm so excited to read this. I don't know too much about the plot. I know it's set at Oxford. I know it's to do with translation and language. So many people have been reading this and talking about how amazing it is. And I'm actually gonna be reading it in about two weeks, two to three weeks, which I am so excited for. I really, really am very excited to read this. For me, I think this has been probably the most hyped book on booktube this year. And I've kind of got another one coming out in May next year. It feels very fast. <laughs> yeah, I know this is gonna take me a little while to get through. It's got footnotes. I've heard the audiobook is good, so I've got that as well. I'm very, very excited to read it. And uh, I'm hoping I'm gonna love it. Listen, Dark Echo Academia. This all should be my vibe, more so even than this trilogy, which recently killed me. <laughs> like, deceased, I'm gone, I'm dead. So, yeah. Definitely you should love this. We then have Murder Before Even Song, which we've spoken a little bit about. This is definitely inspired by Richard Osman's success. This is by Richard Coles, who is another celebrity in the UK. He's a famous reverend here in the UK. And this just seems like a very cozy murder mystery. We've got a canon of a church who solves the murder. I always say I love, I just love the inciting incident of the murder. <laughs> One of the uh, parishioners is found st stabbed in the neck with a pair of secateurs. Like that is just so quaint, cozy mystery. Like I just, oh, I love it. But yeah, the idea of reading from, you know, a priest's perspective where those people specifically in a small town such as this are probably very close within the community. A lot of people want to talk to them about how they're feeling, perhaps confess something they've done. So I think it's a very unique, imaginative way to set up a murder mystery. I don't think this is going to be the greatest work of literature. I always say this that I've ever read, but <laughs> I am hoping I'm going to love it. Then we have another Silver Mona Garcia that I've bought, my third that I've bought, none that I've read. <laughs> no, that sounds bad, guys and forgive me for saying it. And that is the daughter of Dr. Moreau. I think this is gonna be my first introduction to Sylvia Moreau Garcia, which is crazy that it's that I've bought, but I do have plans to hopefully read this in November. I don't know much about it other than it's about the daughter of Dr. Moreau. And that's, I mean, I had to pre-order it because if you know, in my favorite series ever, one of the characters is Catherine Moreau and she's like a creation of Dr. Moreau. She's not his daughter, but like, how do you compare to Catherine? I have to know. Like Catherine is literally one of my favorite, favorite, fa I mean, I dream of Catherine. Like Catherine, <laughs> Catherine could kill me for all I am concerned, genuinely. I, I adore her. I don't believe in the glorification of murder. I do believe in the empowerment of women. I have to see how this compares. And I'm excited to try Silver Moon Garcia because I feel like Five Star Predictions, all of her books have that air to me, but I have yet to read one. <laughs> Next we have Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. This was gifted to me by one of my lovely patrons, Clara. I love the cover for this so much. Isn't she gorgeous? Like I just love the pink. I feel like pink is having a little bit of a moment right now. And I just love the pink energy. This is one I really want to get to soon. So it's about Her Majesty's Royal Coven, which is like, witchy secret coven <laughs> um, working for the United Kingdom, working for the UK government, but it's witches and it's a place for them to reach their full potential and develop their gifts. The greatest enemy comes from then. Oh, I love this. I, this year, read The Rook uh, by Daniel Malley, which is another like secret government department with a supernatural edge to it book. And I just think that's a little bit of a flavor that I enjoy. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think it's a little bit of a flavor that I enjoy. So yeah, I've never read anything from Juno Dawson. This is gonna be my first, but I just love this cover. And I feel like, oh my God, the idea of this gets me so excited. And then two more new releases that I got my hands on. We have Someone in Time, which is an anthology. We have Shauna Maguire in here, Alex E. Harrow, Theodora Goss. But this is all about 
short stories about time travel and romance, which for me feels like an interesting, like for the whole, <laughs> for the whole anthology to be about time travel and romance, like surely all of the stories are gonna be on a similar, similar line. Do you know what I mean? So I'm intrigued to see how the different stories differentiate. Obviously the ones I'm most excited for are those three, which are three of my favorite authors together in one anthology, Sean McGuire, Theodora Goss, Alex E. Harrow. You know what's the most exciting thing about winning? It's when you win. I love that feeling. But there's a lot of authors I've always wanted to try and hear, like Sarah Gailey, Zen Cho. So I'm excited to see what I think of their ones. And this is gonna be the first anthology I actually like rate each short story. I've never done that before, but I think it could help me figure out what my average rating for the anthology is. So yes, very excited for this. And then the last one is The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. Tiffany D. Jackson, I've read two books, given them both three stars. This has to be a five star. Her synopses are always five stars, five stars, five stars for me. Like the fa my favorite synopses ever to exist. This is a Carrie retelling. I've heard only amazing things about this so far. Everyone who I've seen reading this so far has been giving it five stars. A lot of you told me that the audiobook was great. So I'm definitely gonna listen to the audiobook as well for this. And this is gonna be the first Time I give to TG Jackson five stars. I'm saying it now and that makes it true. Next, I don't think you guys are ready for this. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I have three months of fairy loot boxes to unbox. I don't know how it got to this. I keep meaning, I like to obviously save them. I don't open them without unboxing them on here for you guys. And somehow we've got three months to unbox. So <laughs> let's do this now because I'm excited to see what's in here. I think this is June, July, and August boxes. I don't know which box is which, they've probably been messed about, but let's just unbox together. This always feels like Christmas whenever I open Fairy Loot. I get very excited. They do send these to me, but obviously I tell you guys what I think on what most excites me. So oh, oh, let's get into it. Oh my goodness. Okay. So this is August. We have the theme of Tell Me Lies. Uh, what's the song? Tell Me Lies. Tell Me Lies. <laughs> oh my goodness. What is this? This is gorgeous. This is a jewelry box. Oh my goodness, what a high, this feels very high quality. It's like velvet. Look how gorgeous, it's like velvet. Oh my goodness, that is gorgeous. I don't tend to wear a lot of jewelry, but the jewelry that I do own is always just like, it's not stored very nicely. So this is actually perfect for me. I've always, I'm one of those people where I don't wear a lot of jewelry. So I've never bought anything to like store my jewelry. It's always just like put on my little cart over there very untidily. Oh my goodness. <laughs> They've got a oh come on not a tote this gives me dark academia vibes like this tote excuse me autumn dark academia vibes <gasps> oh my goodness wow those two first items have been some of my favorite items that we've had in a while gorge okay wow constantly raising the bar for us all and doing it flawlessly we have a pin inspired by gilded i've got to be honest the pins aren't like necessarily my thing i don't know what to do with them <laughs> I like usable objects, if I'm honest. I like things that I can use. So the pins aren't always for me, but that one is really cute. We have Romeo and Juliet list pad. Cute. These are some of their foiled bookmarks they've been doing by Mythology. Oh my God, I love those, especially the girly. How cute. What is her name? I don't know who these people are. An 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 Anansi and a pat, a pate. I don't, I don't follow Mythology. I don't know. I'm sorry. I do not know that man. <laughs> I mean, he could be walking down the street. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know a thing. Sorry to this man. I've been using these uh, bookmarks a lot. Okay, let's find out what the book of the month is. Oh, we've got red sprayed edges. We've got a ribbon bookmark. Oh no, I'm rubbing on the tripod. Oh my God, everything's going wrong. <laughs> what is this? <gasps> oh, I haven't heard of this. Violet Made of Thorns by Gina Chen. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Look at the ombre sprayed edges. Oh my goodness, that is not fair. What is this about? It says, it's a darkly enchanted fantasy about a morally gray witch, a cursed prince, and a prophecy that ignites their twisted fate destinies. Oh my God, they've done this again. Like gorgeous illustrations on the end pages. They always do this to me and it's, oh wait, have we got anything? <gasps> I don't know if they've done this before, like artwork on the hardcover itself. Oh my God, that is so gorgeous. Great start. We're off to a great start with this first box. The jewelry box and the tote bag are absolute highlights for me. Okay, so this is Chosen Ones, June. Oh my God, I like that art. That gives me good vibes. Oh, we have a trinket dish. Oh my God, Rin from the Poppy War, get out. They know that that's just killed me. <laughs> I swear to God, how cute, it's Rin. 
Love that. Okay. Oh, we've got another book sleeve. Oh, okay. This is the Atlas Six inspired, which I have not read. Don't plan on reading, but I do love their book sleeves because I always say they have zips. I feel like book sleeves. Oh, this one's got very nice lining on the inside. Well, guess what, people? I get excited about small things. Oh my god, we have a paperback book. <gasps> Get out. Okay, this is Twin Crowns by Catherine Rubber and Catherine Doyle. I was worried both of their names wasn't Catherine and I was like calling them the wrong name. I've heard such good things about this and look. Oh, oh my God, the foil? No. I just know it's about two sisters and a crown. I think they're like fighting for the crown. Don't really know, but I've heard really good things about this and I like the kind of like fairy tale forbidden like castle like all of that kind of stuff i do like that vibe oh these are cute there's little tabs with daggers i don't tab a lot so these aren't super useful for me but i know a lot of people especially people who read fantasy do tab a lot but i don't if i'm honest i don't know how much i'll use these because i do not really tab <laughs> I'm just not a tabby girly. I just like to read and then get gone. You know what I mean? And then let's see what the book is. Oh my God, yellow edges. Ooh, how gorgeous is that? This Vicious Grace. A swoon-worthy romantic comedy set in an Italian-inspired fantasy world where a young girl's gift can either save or kill. <gasps> oh my God, can you see like the little, the little stencil on the edge? How gorge. I need to stop saying gorge. I am not got Mick. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I love the brown. It's like a brown hardcover. Oh my God. I love this. <laughs> I love them doing these end pages now. I really love the design end pages. I think they're just so gorgeous. Wow. Love the sound of that as well. Okay. Final box. My goodness. <laughs> So this is July's. Oh, it looks like a maze. Hang on, what is this? Trials and Retribution. What have we got? Oh, we've got socks. Now I love getting socks because I always need socks. <laughs> so I love getting socks in Foley. These are inspired by Gideon the Ninth. Oh, we have one of these things. We have a pin banner inspired by Dance of Thieves. Now, as I said, I don't really use pins. I could put them on these, but that's like another thing that I personally won't use. But if you collect the pins, that is a good thing to have. Oh my goodness. What is this? A print album. <gasps> it's like leather. That is a very clever idea because sometimes you get the prints and I'm like, what am I going to do with that? As someone who like isn't going to put them up on their walls, but that is such a good idea. Wow. They like know what you need. <laughs> oh my goodness. We have a letter opener. They always know how to design these. Look at her. We have some metal straws of various sizes. I'm always talking to my family about how I should or we should be more sustainable. So love that. And then let's see what the book is. Oh, The Darkening by Sonia Mara. Look at that cover. Look at the foil. <gasps> Stenciled edge. Let's look. Has it got the end pages? Ah! <laughs> Oh my goodness, that is so gorgeous. And look at that. God, Fairy Loot just kill it every time. They said, listen, what are we supposed to do? Wow, love that. Okay, that is three great months of boxes from Fairy Loot. Okay, now that is done. <laughs> we finished that unboxing. Oh my God, I'm like overheating. Let's talk about some books that I have been very kindly gifted. So I just realized this one's a 2022 release as well. But when I was feeling ill a little while back, one of my patrons, Melissa, gifted me a spoonful of murder from my Amazon wish list. This is like another <laughs> Thursday Murder Club. I don't like calling them rip-offs, but like heavily inspired book. <laughs> In this one, we're following three retired school teachers who meet up at a garden center, which if you haven't been in, if you haven't lived in the UK, garden centers are a big place for people to meet up and have lunch. Like you go to, a, <laughs> my mum's very into going to garden centers. <laughs> yeah, they bump into one of their ex-colleagues and then the next week their ex-colleague is dead and they have to figure it out. Very exciting. <laughs> now, after I read The Glass Hotel and really, really enjoyed it by Emily St. John Mandel, someone gifted me Station Eleven from my wish list. I don't know who. <laughs> I asked on Instagram, no one, no one like, you know, volunteered that it was them. So if it was you, thank you so much. Please let me know who it was because I want to thank whoever got me Station Eleven. But I've always wanted to read Station Eleven, but especially after reading The Glass Hotel and enjoying it, I want to read this even more. I don't know too much about it other than it's, I know it's with actors and actresses in like the apocalypse. I think like there's been a pandemic, not apocalypse maybe, but there's been like a pandemic essentially. I, I remember at the start of the pandemic, there was the two camps, like very, very anti-reading <laughs> pandemic books 
and people who were like finding solace through reading pandemic books. So I remember there being a lot of discourse, like renewed discourse around it. But I really liked Emily St. John Mandel's writing. So I'm very intrigued to see what I think when reading this. Then after Courtney Summers became one of my favorite authors <laughs> through giving her three five stars, I've now given her three five stars and one four star. Another one of my lovely patrons, Shanice, gifted me Some Girls Are and All the Rage. These are two of her older books. Obviously I read Cracked Up To Be, which was her debut and I loved it. So I'm intrigued to read these as well and kind of just see more of the journey of her books. I don't really know what these two are about, but I mean like Courtney Summers books are always down a similar topic where you follow a girl who is facing up to the real terrors of the world that exist in some form of capacity and is going through something really difficult. So, but at this point I'm basically, I was gonna say I'm guaranteed to have a good time. I'm, I don't have a good time. <laughs> Often Cordy Summers books are very heartbreaking to read, but I enjoy hurting myself apparently. Stop it. Get some help. Then another one of my patrons, Kayla, saw these in a bookshop and thought of me and got them for me, which was so kind. So we have The Mansell Park Murder and The Man in Black by Lynn Shepard. This is a start of a detective series. One of these is a retelling of Mansell Park and the other is a retelling of a Charles Dickens novel, but it doesn't tell me which one. <laughs> But yeah, these are both murder mysteries. They're both new releases that I haven't heard anyone speak about. They've got like barely any reviews yet on Goodreads. So yeah, excited to read both of these. It was so kind of Kayla to see these and think of me. And I always love reading books that not a lot of people have read yet and seeing what I think. Because I think when you've heard a lot of people talk about a book, it can kind of like, you know, color what you think of it or, or give you preconceived notions where I really like going into books that I haven't heard anyone read, uh, read yet or talk about yet and seeing what I think without anything that other people have said colouring what I'm thinking. And then finally, oh, I should have put this with a spoonful of murder. Melissa at the same time also got me The Burning Issue of the Day by T.E. Kinsey. This is my favourite cozy mystery series, The Lady High Castle Mysteries. This one, a journalist has been killed in a suspicious blaze. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Everything points to a group of suffragettes. Oh my gosh, exciting. I'm getting older. I, I don't know if I can, if I want all this drama all the time, if I'm being honest. Lady Hardcastle Mysteries are just a bit of a comfort read for me at this point. I really, really enjoy reading them and just, you know, letting myself be taken into this world for a few hours. I really, I think these are so readable, so fun, great writing. Two horror books I just have to mention that I've recently hauled are This Thing Between Us and Comfort Me With Apples. I am reading them both this week. I have already actually read this thing between us, but I don't want to tell you what I think about it because that would be spoiling this weekend's video. This is about a guy whose wife has recently died and it's very much about his grief and very strange things happening to him. I don't want to give too much away. And I don't really know what Comfort Me With Apples is about too much. I've been told by many people to kind of go into it blind. I know a lot of people have compared it to Don't Worry Darling in that it's dark and something to do with like a woman living in this kind of perfect suburbia community and something to do with her husband and everything not being as it seems. So yes, reading a lot of horror this week. Excited to see what I what I think of this one. Let's talk about a few other books that I've already read actually. So you guys have heard me speak about these already, but I bought them in the period since I last did my book haul. We have The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware, which I read on a cruise and it's set on a cruise in the Norwegian fjords and I was on a cruise in the Norwegian fjords. It was such a great place to read it and I gave it five stars because of that. Our protagonist, when she gets on this luxury cruise trip she sees a woman in the room next to her but is later told that no woman was there when after the night she hears a scream I think and then a body splash or what sounds like a body splash into the sea and I just loved this um I know a lot of people don't like this one from Ruth Ware but I just thought it was a solid fun quick thriller I love Ruth Ware's writing it's just like I don't even have to think about if I'm drawing the writing, I just enjoy it, you know, and just sink back into it. Another one that I gave five stars was Delicates by Brenna Thumner. This is the sequel to Sheets. It is a graphic novel. It's all in these like blues, purples, and pinks tones, which I think is so gorgeous. And I enjoyed Sheets, but I loved this one so, so much. It tackles more about bullying, about, you know, being different. It's a middle grade and I think, oh, I'm just thinking of how many kids could benefit from reading this when, you know, you're maybe like 11 or 12 and God, like kids are horrible at that age. I hated year six at school. I 
hated it. And I just think reading stuff like this would have been so, so helpful. It also tackles grief in the series. And um, yeah, I hope there is gonna be more. None more have been, none more, Jesus Christ. Sometimes when I'm talking, I talk so fast, I don't realize what I'm saying. What would you do if when you okay, so he said yes would go? And then one that wasn't as great I read for my patron book club was Final Girls by Riley Sager. I just found this kind of boring. It was three stars. It wasn't bad. Like Survive the Night by Riley Sager is worse. It's a worse book. I gave it two stars, but I had more fun reading it than I did this. It was just fine. Like I maybe even it was lower than a three star. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't think about her anymore. I don't think about her. It's about these final girls. One of them dies in mysterious circumstances and then the other two kind of meet up and there's a mystery going on with like, is something happening? Are they getting killed off? What is going on? Yeah, I just didn't like this. And like the descriptions of sex in it were like a bit like, okay, you're a man, like. <laughs> and then the final stack I have were the ones that I bought when I went to London and filmed a book shopping vlog. So I'm literally just gonna hold these up and say their names because this video is already 10 years long. And um, <laughs> you've seen me buy these, say why I buy them and then haul them at the end of the video. If you haven't watched that, definitely go check it out. I had so much fun exploring different bookshops in London. The It Girl by Ruth Ware, which is one of my most anticipated thrillers. I obviously love Ruth Ware stuff. This follows a girl who found her best friend's body 10 years ago. A guy went away for the crime and now people are saying that maybe he did not in fact kill her. I got two graphic novels. We've got Saga Volume 2, which is like a high fantasy, sci-fi kind of series that I'm reading. And I saw it and I thought, listen, I've read volume one. I should actually try and make progress in the series. So I got volume two. I also got The House of Lost Horizons, which is like a murder mystery horror graphic novel, maybe a bit supernatural it looks like on the cover. So I've never seen a murder mystery graphic novel before. So when I saw this, I knew I had to get it. We've got The Three Dahlias, which I'd never heard of before, but it's like a classic murder mystery where these three women who have played this famous detective throughout the years come together at the author's, the late author's estate um, for this party and they end up having to solve murders there. We have Carrie Soto is back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I love Taylor Jenkins Reid. I've given all three of her the main new era books because <laughs> she has older books that we won't talk about as much. But yeah, new era books. I've given them all five stars. I love them. This one we're following Carrie Soto in the 90s, who's a famous tennis player. She had the record for most amount of slams, but then someone equals her record and she wants to come back many years later since she retired and play again. We have Unraveler by Frances Harding. This, I don't know too much about the plot. I gave one of Frances Harding's books five stars this year. And it was the first time I'd read from Frances Harding. It says, in a world where anyone can create a life destroying curse, only one person has the power to unravel them. <gasps> but I just feel like no one around me is experiencing this in the same way as me. Frances Harding has this beautiful, fantastical, fairy tale like writing. So I read the first page of this and absolutely fell in love in a way that I don't often with like first pages and I knew I had to get it. I got Gallant by V.E. Schwab, which is one of the books that has been out for a while this year and I've been really wanting to get my hands on. What I know is that um, this girl receives a letter from her uncle giving her his estate. She gets there, her uncle is already dead and the letter is years late and she has two rules. Don't go out after dusk and always stay on the right side of the crumbling wall. So yeah, I, I really enjoy B.E. Schwab's writing a lot of the time and a lot of people were telling me earlier this year that I'm really going to enjoy this. So excited to get to this. And lastly, I got Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert L. Stevenson and other books because obviously Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is quite a short book. And I'm going to be reading this in a video that I've got coming in November and I'm not going to say anything else. But yeah, I never really thought I would read this. I don't tend to read a lot of classics, but I'm excited to read it for the video that I've got planned. Thank you guys so much for watching this book haul. Please let me know any books here that you've loved. I always wanna hear what you guys have thought about books that you've read and which books I should get to next. So please let me know that down below. Let me know which books you would most like to see me read, whether it's because you enjoyed them or cause you wanna see what I think of the book before you get it. So that always helps me figure out which books to prioritize. So please let me know that down below. If you got into the end, oh my goodness, what should we comment? Oh, comment the spider emoji. There's a lot of spiders. <laughs> on Unraveler and like this spider web on the cover. So comment a spider emoji if you got into the end. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.